Hello, hello, hi everyone. Hello, uh, my fellow war gamers and strategy gamer. Hello, Mordante. I just had Enzo telling me where is Mordante? Mordante has been missing for a long time. Where was he last week and the week before? And we were starting to worry, and then Mordante shows up, like. Uh, you know, it's um, thanks for joining us. Been about a month. <sighs> Time flies. Time flies. Um, uh, we did miss you, Mordante. We uh, so welcome back. Um, you missed all the Field of Glory news that were given over the last month, but I'm sure that um, your um, uh, uh, fellow community f uh, follower. It just light has just appeared on the side here. So um, yeah, I uh, will will give you an update about uh, Field of Glory as as soon as as soon as we can. Anyway, um, you don't know you record this stuff, right? Uh, I I I tend to forget about that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be so funny and stupid all the time. I would be much more serious about what um, what uh, what I do, uh, but anyway, last week we launched uh, headquarters. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks everyone for uh, buying the game and leaving a review. Uh, so if you if you wonder how uh, how it went and if you were happy about the launch, I think we're uh, overall uh, the um, the the game went very well. We uh, we are very happy about the. Feedback we had, you know, very positive reviews, very, very positive reviews from the press, uh, from in general media and, and players really like the game. So that's um, that's a really good thing, because as we said, you know, this game is the start of something that we are planning to uh, take uh, further um, over time. Uh, the game has been very well received by by everyone. We are very happy. Uh, number of copies sold is uh, pretty good so far. Um, we are we're we're looking um, around. You know what we were expecting basically. So that's also very good. And um, you know we, we're now starting uh, to uh, look at uh, you know sort of two different types of trails here. Uh, one is what is coming next in terms of content and DLCs, and the other one is you know fixing what is um, currently not working or needs improvement. Uh, so Starny Games uh, are um, hard at work on both uh, both things, and I guess that you'll see the first um, you know uh, there's actually a there's actually a patch, an update in testing currently. So um, that's, you know, I think it's been announced yesterday. So there's quite a lot of stuff that's already been fixed and uh, is in testing. And, um, you know, overall, you know, the game is uh, the game is progressing well. We didn't have any major flaw at release, which is uh, which is very good, of course, uh, for um, for a game like this, which is huge. Uh, and I keep saying, um, you know, I don't know if you kind of notice this stuff, but we've just launched two games, Terminator and Headquarters. And um, both uh, of these uh, games are absolutely massive. You know, they're game. These are games with campaign or campaigns, skirmish, um, a number of multiplayer options. There's, there's uh, map editors, whatever. There's a lot of content on each of these games. And for us, it's, it's, it's looking at these things and saying, okay, is this too much? You know, because if you look at what, you know, players do in, the, in these games, they tend to sort of focus on one thing only at the start and then, you know, maybe experiment on one or the other modes uh, as they go but um, it's definitely something that we're, we're looking at right now because when you when we make such big games uh, it takes much longer to develop of course and you end up having maybe a game where people are only doing like 90% of the people are doing uh, the campaign and only 10% are playing multiplayer so you know maybe that 10% on multiplayer cost us or cost us uh, made us you know delay the game by i don't know 900 months or a year so it's a it's a thing that we're looking at right now because developing these games and making them available with such a big amount of content usually uh is uh, is a challenge for for us and it's also something that's i don't know if players sometimes you know don't really 
understand or appreciate the amount of the huge amount of content in these games uh, that is in these games. So, absolutely um, looking at this subject, and we welcome uh, uh, your input on that because it's definitely an area where we want to uh, understand a bit more of you know where the where the market is going. So, yeah, uh, give us give us your help. Um, I can see um, some some questions there. No one is never going to say, give me less game, though. Yeah, I know, I know that. But, Edmund, I think that the point re really is here. Where, where, do, we, where do we stop uh, before we launch a game? So, there's always going to be multiplayer for these games. You know, is it stuff that we add as we go so that people are finished with their current core game experience and then they can sort of move to something else you know, f further down the line, or is it something that we, you should be delivered with the main game? So, it's not about what's in the game in general, it's what, what's in the game at launch. So, um, definitely something we want, to, uh, we want to look into. And again, you know, it's a conversation we'd like to have with you guys. Um, so, yeah, uh, so that's for headquarters. Again, thanks for, thanks for um, giving us a, a, a great amount of feedback and we look forward uh, to uh, the next phase. As I said, this is the sort of, this is the third game that we, sort of the full, third full game we've released this year with, um, you know, Stargate, Terminator and headquarters. Uh, there's far more to release in the future. Uh, we have, uh, the next big thing we have is of course, Field of Glory Kingdoms, uh, releasing in June. Um, uh, you look pre, probably people want more, want workshop implementation for H HQ. Yeah, that's a good thing, that's a good point. Absolutely, the editor um, is one of the big things. Um, and I'm coming to Battle Sector later, Yog Dog, absolutely. Um, so, uh, Kingdoms, and then we have many other games in development, as you know. The next uh, big uh, um, game that goes in testing is uh, Scramble. Uh, so, uh, Monday this week we have opened the beta uh, subscription for Scramble Battle of Britain. You know this game, you know what it's you know, how it's structured and what it's like. It's a different type of game uh, to, um, you know, what we're kind of used to um, because it's sort of a, you know, it's a, uh, it's not your usual you know, tactical or strategic game. It's a, it's a flight, it's a we go flight sim. And um, we know that's a kind of a different proposition, but we're also looking at making this a, um, you know, it's one of the key releases for us this year. The, the idea of a scramble is that basically there's nothing like this in the market. So we're looking at testing and iterating as much as we can. So the first group of um, stream of um, beta testers will be giving us a lot of input on control system and you know how the game plays as in a, what we call a vertical slice. So, you know, the battle, you know, how is it that the game performs and, and, and if you like it or not like it or what doesn't work and what works. And then we'll sort of add more as we go because um, it's not only new to us, but it's something that's not any present anywhere in the market. So we want, we want a lot of feedback on this one. Um, yeah, there's chats about the um, editor, so absolutely. Scramble could move to uh, World War One in the future. That would rock. Absolutely. I mean, this this is an engine. It's almost like a you know a a system uh, that we want to um, we're working on, and it could be applied to anything. I mean, I I disclose it now. Dream of my life uh, after I saw Scramble is like make a dragon fighting game. I'd love to see that. Um, you know, uh, fantasy themed dragon love fighting game. That'd be great. I don't know how dragon fighting performs on a Wigo system, but that'd be great uh, to see. Um, and yeah, again, something very, very different. But I think safer to test it on a World War II setting and then see what, uh, what's happening uh, after, after that. Uh, so Scramble, uh, if you're interested in giving your, your opinion on a game um, that's kind of different from uh, what you're used to play, uh, give us, give it a go on. Um, it's on the beta subscription. Are open. 
I look forward to inevitable Spitfire. Yes, I mean, uh, there's, again, number of, number of planes in the game. Uh, it's another feedback that we'd like because right now we are, re we're, you know, we're simulating very, very accurately, you know, a number of aircrafts, but ideally we want to add more aircrafts in the future and a lot of, of you know, how this is um, happening uh, depends on the feedback we get. Um, so that's for, for Scramble. Um, uh, I have seen Yog Dog's um, question about the battle sector. Battle sector, um, uh, there's a big, uh, there's an announcement going out next week about battle sector, uh, which is more of a structural announcement on the future of battle sector and, and well, actually the present and the future of battle sector. There's going to be a lot happening on Battle Sector. There's, the game is on, actually on sale right now on, on Steam and it's generating a lot of attention over the last, probably since the release of Tau. The number of daily players on Battle Sector has gone up immensely. Not thanks to Tau itself, but the, the actual people buying the game, you know, the main game. And um, uh, I, can, I can see that this is sort of a, following a trend that we see that after like, two, three years in the market, the game starts to get attention from a whole new amount of players. And, uh, and, and Battle Sector is going through that phase right now. So we're looking at Battle Sector as in what we, what we want to achieve with this game in the next three or four years um, is, uh, is an interesting challenge. So Battle Sector ultimately is a sort of, a, it's, it's a battle space, right? So it's, it's like the more factions you have, the more fun you can have with it. But it's also a very flexible type of engine where you could do uh, a lot of stuff with. You know, right now you have like three game modes. There's of course the multiplayer, which is, you know, PBM, but, uh, but also with the, with the live option and only one campaign. But, and, and a number of factions, right? How this whole structure of the game is, um, is is um, set up right now is probably not fit for the future of the franchise as in right we have come to the point where what we have has to be expanded and reworked a bit so we are uh, working uh, on on a plan for that and and we're having battle sector meetings every day now so um, it's uh, it's a quite uh, an interesting uh, point in the life of the game and not always we have the luxury of going through this second phase it's usually you know get to the point where right you this this increase in the uh you know in the sales and the life cycle or product goes like oop like this and you say okay right is it time to sort of rethink the whole thing and then go and and face the next phase um it's it's an interesting one and and i guess that going back to what it was at launch Already, Battle Sector is very different from what it was at launch. So, it's um, it's interesting. Again, here uh, communities are very split. I mean, we know that the next thing that a lot of people want are Imperial Guards, a new campaign. You know, we know the key things, but there's a lot of smaller things that players are asking for that are very hard to identify how important it is because you may be having like a group of 10 asking for something. And it's, it's like, is it like the vocal minority or is it a real thing that, that could use for, you know, for, for the future of the game? Not an easy one. You want to be in our, you know, in our shoes sometimes. It's, um, it's interesting to have these conversations because Think about everything that goes like, okay, we have a year of development. What do we want to achieve in during this year? Do we want like one game mode, one faction, this and that? Or do we want like, and, and you can't have everything. So, but also you, you know that you have to please a little bit, you know, parts of the community. So hard to identify there what is important and what is uh, just, um, just maybe a, a couple of guys asking for something. I only play 40 games game, 40k games for their campaigns. Edmond, Edmond, Ed, Edmond. Anyway, 
Um, there's um, a couple of other things I wanted to give you updates on 2v2 co-op. That's one thing that's not coming up as often, but it's something that could be really cool, actually. Uh, Ballroom Brian gets uh, two points. That gets 100 extra slits for this um, suggestion. Will you add Battle Sector to Slit Store? Hey, Yuliug. Yuliug is here for the Slit Store. He's our Slit Store biggest fan. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm not responsible for that, but uh, let, me, let me take a peek. Are we adding uh, Battle Sector to the Slit Store? <laughs> not planned for now. Uh, uh, somebody with a picture, not planned for now, like this. Um, so, no, I was saying there's, there's a few uh, bits of content, uh, and I'm coming to a combat mission now, uh, Monka Strap. Um, the, um, the, the two big things I want to update you on, um, you remember that there's a war in the Pacific, sorry, Strategic Command World War II war in the Pacific um, game releasing uh, this, later this year, um, towards the end of Q, towards the end of June, I think, was it? Let me check. Yes, end of June. Um, I have a release schedule here. You can't read it, but it's. I'm. I'm like. I can't spoil anything, so I can. I do this like this. First title is headquarters, anyway. So that's released already. Um, so there's a second dev diary about Strategic Command uh, World War II uh, Pacific, being published on the Steam page and on our website. It's. Um, it's a whole focus about um, Japan's allies in this one. So give it a go. Um, check it out. This is, I think, the fifth game of the Strategic Command series. There's quite uh, a lot of excitement internally for this one because it sort of brings it to a different um, kind of gameplay. Um, a lot of, a lot more, a lot more uh, naval combat and so on. So uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting take on it. I guess that if you, if you go back to what war in conflict is. It's just like, you know, much more, you know, focus on the area. So there's a lot of gameplay changes that you'll hopefully really, really like. Um, and that's coming out in, in June. Hopefully June, yeah. Um, if, if all the beta stuff goes well. Um, again, uh, this is another game. You can go on matrixgames.com slash beta and uh, subscribe to uh, the beta testing uh, and give us your feedback. Also, um, we have uh, just uh, um, done a Starship Troopers uh, dev diary. Starship Troopers um, Urban Onslaught is uh, the next uh, DLC uh, for Starship Troopers for the award-winning, best-selling, fast-paced, combat-based, real-time strategy game of the uh, year, Starship Troopers. Um, this is the, the second DLC, and we've just published the first uh, dev diary. Again, you can find it on uh, the Steam product page and on our website, on all our social media channel. You can uh, you can check it out. Do we have? A, I think we have a video for this, right? Do we have a video? Yes. Go for the video. Yes, there was not supposed to be any sound on the video because this is um, just for the en environments. It's, it's something that we've published alongside the Dev Diary, uh, not uh, fit for you know um, a, a live stream. But I wanted to sort of show you some of the environments. What is hard with Starship Troopers, uh, you know, coming up with um, uh, you know new settings and 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 you know new campaigns. Lucas has been thinking about this a lot, and the thing is that usually. Your new campaign is, you know, reusing some of the assets and Lucas doesn't like that. So he wants to, he really wanted to create something different all the time. So when we have the uh, the launch of Raising Hell, you know, there's 
a lot more gameplay elements that come into uh, uh, the equation. I think that you know that's that was really you know how can we turn this game into something that's a little bit different. You know, same gameplay, but a little bit different, but new units. And then running the same exercise for other DLCs is always harder. And um, I think with Urban Onslaught, you know, creativity and the, the scenario design and the setting design has been brought to a, a whole new level. Not only because, okay, we're in, we're in cities now, so it's it's a different type of gameplay somehow, uh, but also this new units, you'll, you'll know more about the uni units uh, later, um, you know, in, in the process, but new units, new environments, they are really adding a lot to the gameplay itself. I'm, I'm super excited about this one, to be honest, because it's really giving, um, proving that developing a, um, a, a DLC, but also trying to improve give some more uh, flavor all the time is not impossible. And um, and if you have like a lot of creativity and a lot of, you know, understanding of uh, of uh, what you're doing. Uh, so Artistocrats there, Lucas and Michiel and, he and their team are doing an exceptional job at putting together something that's entirely similar, but entirely different at the same time. Uh, in the, and, and if you like, like the game, the, 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 the Terran Command game, and you're into it, you probably want to play more, and this is a perfect way of actually doing that. Um, does Hell Divers, um, Mark, is there any chance we get with D and D rules from? We get game with D and D rules from Sleeder in Eraser. Um, uh, next question. Uh, I I can't, I can't really answer this. Uh, does Helldivers 2 affect Starship Troopers game? Um, gamer, I'd say uh, yes and no. I mean, um, Helldivers is a, is a first-person shooter, ultimately, and um, so it does affect, affect the Starship Troopers... Um, recognition of the brand so if you look at the graph of people searching for starship troopers on the internet since the whole launch of hell divers it's like boof, gone up like tremendously uh, if you if you think about how it impacts our sales very very little um so i would say yes as in, we get more eyeballs, but no, because our game is so different from what they do or from, you know, the type of experience that they try to deliver that it's not really impacting us. Um, of course, there's, there's, there's other Starship Wars games that are more impacted by it um, than, than us. Um, uh, sounds like a negotiation, but probably not. Sergeant Zedok. Um, not really. Are the urban environment supposed to be from Earth or another planet? Uh, other planet? Um, just ask, be fine. Um, no, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, absolutely, DND is, is great and it's on a high and it's a uh, fantastic uh, property. Um, and um, who wouldn't love to work on it? Absolutely. Any news on modern naval warfare? Haven't heard anything about that in a while. Uh, yes. Well, news news on uh, uh, modern naval warfare. The last uh, latest news is basically the team went from being a three people's team to being a fully fledged. Uh, I think it's now there are 11, 10 or 11 people in the team in the Maslas um, offices in uh, Athens. The uh, number of people working on it has, has increased, as so the amount, the pace of delivery um, on the game. It's a, it's, this is a game that's weird enough that, you know, it's like you construct the submarine and you do the detail, but then adding all the game, game, gameplay layers and all the systems uh, is what requires the most um, the more the most time and also because this is going to be probably the most accurate subsim ever ever created um, everything is technically very challenging because it's never been done before so from sound to um, weather effects and so on everything is like super super detailed 
Uh, so it has to be tested multiple times, not by commercial beta testers, but by people who actually know the subject matters. And that's really taking a lot of time. So if you tell me, you know, what is it that we're looking at for a, for a target release date, uh, we're probably going to enter beta um, at towards the end of quarter three, quarter, beginning of quarter four, and that's going to also dictate the release date, how, depending on how, how, that, uh, how that goes. Um, Simulation games are just bloody demand to create. Absolutely yes, and I have to say that you know with this and and scramble, we're seeing a completely different set of complications, um, where basically, you know, you get to deliverable of here's here's a plane, it's flying, you know, and you know that's done, right? You think that the game is almost done, but then you've got like at least, you know four years in front of you to sort of de de deliver a solid simulation system, but it's also enjoyable. Um, and especially for, especially for the flight simulations, it's, it's interesting because the control system is like 50% of the experience itself. So you might think that the actual plane performs well and, and has the right movements and such, but then the problem is that you have to make it feel like that on a controller or, or, or through the controls. And that's just sort of taking this uh, problem to another level. And, and we're doing strategy games. So everything we do in that respect is all new. So we have to, of course, we're, we've got expert developers doing it. But on the other hand, in terms of, you know, producing and testing and, and marketing and everything else, there's, there's, you know, completely different world for us. So, yeah, uh, that's really the, uh, the, the, the gist of it. What month can we expect to hear about the new Fog 2 game, not Kingdoms? Uh, Mordante, uh, hopefully within the year, but I don't know. I think Miki's telling me that I have to speak, talk about we are joining WASD. Just, just a hint there. So we're joining WASD, uh, WASD, sorry, uh, in London next uh, week. Um, so uh, you'll find a lot of people from the team. So if you want to go to London, uh, WSD, um, you can find us there. There's going to be a, f um, a Starship, Troopers, uh, Starship Trooper booth uh, with um, eight computers. There's, there's going to be also the um, Lava Challenges, which is basically uh, four PCs are going to be uh, focusing on uh, a challenge dedicated to um, the um, Raising Hell DLC. And um, I, what the idea is behind is basically uh, you sit down, you play the game, and if you achieve a number of uh, points, you get, you get a T-shirt, um, which is, you know, pretty cool. I have no more questions. Just want to say thank for the fantasy headquarters and can't wait for some DLC. Thank you very much, Eraser. Um, thank you, and uh, we'll soon give you news because... Uh, Headquarters is uh, definitely something that will get more uh, love and content within uh, this year. Any broken arrow news? Uh, what can I say about Yogg uh, Yog about Broken Arrow? Uh, broken Arrow um, currently looking at finishing the campaign and um, delivering the next uh, multiplayer beta. The game is progressing well. Uh, looking at the developers are looking at very much looking at optimization, uh, making sure the game runs on you know uh, uh, the highest number of systems possible. The technical things that are done closer to release, uh, so it's uh, it's not too far off, but still uh, we'll still probably still need a whole of this summer uh, before we get to the point where we can release the game. And uh, also, there's 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 two points that I think we should be we should we're looking at more with more care and attention right now. One is the multiplayer stability and making sure that the multiplayer experience works and it works for everyone. And um, we have a super potato graphics present. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, Neil Neil was uh, uh, sending sent out this email today to everyone involved saying, you know, what we should we expect for minimum specs for, um, for Broken Arrow? And, and my answer was, I don't have a clue. 
it's it's very hard because you know where you draw the line is gonna is gonna tell you a lot about that. Uh, excellent. Hoping my 1080 Yog. We should we should talk about a new computer then. Um, I'm joking. Um, and the other thought, the other, the other one is the campaign. So AI, understanding a bit about AI and what makes this game fun in single player as well, because that's not a minor thing. Is there anything new to say about Combat Mission series? Okay, yeah, um, Combat Mission, uh, we have DLCs this year. Yes, we have uh, a, a content content planned for the existing Combat Mission series uh, this year. Yes, we have um, at least two, if not three, if not four um, different types of things uh, planned. Gosh, am I saying too much here? I don't know. And uh, and we're also we're also working on with Battlefront on the future of combat mission. So there's quite a lot of stuff happening. And um, yeah, so stay tuned on that. Not not too far since we announced something. So uh, stay tuned on that. Sorry, I'm I'm just looking back here because I have to. The the chat has gone too f too far off from on that screen. So. Um. Any news about Yog being banned because he hates tea? Never, I will never yog, ban Yog until he until he does something really, 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 really wrong. And uh, all right, so um, there's this was one about Battle Academy at some point. I don't see this anymore. What's up with the new Battle Academy game you mentioned way back? Uh, that's still, uh, um, sorry, that was Mordante, sorry. Um, uh, Mordante, yes, that's in development. It's in development, well in development. Um, we've got stuff happening on Battle Academy, um, but uh, not something that we can properly announce for the moment. It's, um, it's been a long time, uh, I know, but um, it's, a, it's, a great, um, it's a great series we want to take forward. We don't know, uh, we, we don't have anything like more in detail to say right now. All right, yeah. So, uh, more stuff, I want to, um, there's, there's been a new command update. Um, if, if you um, want to look at that, um, just a very minor, uh, not, not a very minor, a small update, but um, there's just lots of tweaks and such, uh, especially um, uh, the, uh, some fixes to the satellite cyber attacks and such. But uh, again, command, you know, another great, great example of, of a team where we keep um, working on, on updating and making sure that you guys have a, an increasingly better experience. Uh, Terminator, we are going to have an update to the game, a massive update to the game very soon, uh, planned for uh, later this month or, or beginning of next. Uh, a lot of stuff happening on that as well. Terminator has been massively successful, so we're very happy about uh, how, it, uh, how it went so far, and we want to make it uh, uh, even bigger in the future. Uh, po -po -po, there's about a ton of um, sales happening right now. As I said, on Steam you can get Battle Sector series uh, on sale. Gladius is on sale as well, the whole series. Actually, Battle Sector series except for Tau. Uh, Sanctus Reach is also on sale. Uh, massive sales on Sanctus Reach. And if you want a game um, that's really not got, didn't get the attention it deserved. Sanctus Reach is one of these. Uh, I, I still love playing Sanctus Reach. It's really, really cool. We should do some Sanctus Reach st streams at some point, just for fun. Hmm? Okay. No, Enzo is not. Enzo doesn't agree. He was like, mm, okay. No, he's not happy. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Nuclear War Simulator is 40% off as well. And uh, Armor Brigade, all all Armor Brigade games are on sale too. And uh, we have Battle Academy on our website uh, up 
eight, up to 80% off and Heroes Normandy and Conflict of Heroes 2. It seems, looks like a tabletop themed sale here. Uh, is there a streaming schedule? One, three, two, one, no, ah. Okay, just after this, Gamer is playing Terminator Dark Fate Defiance. I am, think I'm also late for a meeting. Um, tomorrow, I'm just saying things, just, just random stuff. Uh, Friday, so tomorrow we have uh, Stargate with Hexaboo at 6 p.m. and uh, XTRG playing eight, uh, headquarters at 8 p.m. Can you recommend any game from Slater in similar to Headquarters World War II? I'll let the community answer that. But um, yeah, I think I was just mentioning Battle Academy. That's probably a good, uh, a good example. And uh, on Saturday, we have uh, Yogg playing Headquarters uh, with French tanks. And the same on Sunday at 4 p.m. Monday next week for Matrix Monday, we have a Flashpoint campaigns with the awesome Sergeant Z-Dog at 4.15 and Gamer playing, uh, the um, equally awesome Gamer playing uh, Combat Mission at 6.15 and uh, equally, equally, but more awesome because he is a, a Slytherin employee, 8.15 command with Kushan. Uh, Tuesday next week, we have uh, Yog Dog playing uh, Headquarters at 4 p.m. So basically, if you don't know what is happening at 4 p.m. or you don't know what, ha what to do at 4 p.m. any day of the week, just come on the site, a website, and watch Yog Dog play headquarters. And uh, next week on Wednesday, uh, surprise, surprise, headquarters with Yog Dog at 4 p.m. And uh, what's your mod with Richard York with Field of Glory 2? Fantastico! Yeah, yeah, Battle Academy, look into it. It's actually, Eraser, it's actually 80% off on our website, so you might have a good deal there, and all the DLCs, produce quite a lot of DLCs. Uh, uh, okay, uh, com. It's not too bad. Um, Thankfully, no French campaigns yet on headquarters. We can fix that for sure. Anyway, um, next week is uh, on Thursday is uh, Italy's Liberation Day. So the 25th of April and also San Marco Evangelista. My onomastico. So why would I be here talking to you when can I have a, where, when I can have a day off? Uh, but also a bank holiday. So I will pr probably see you uh, in the uh, following week on uh, the, is it the 3rd or the 2nd of May? The 2nd of May. Enzo is on holiday on the 2nd of May if you wanted to know about Enzo's holidays. Um, but anyway, I'll be here and make sure, and uh, Miki will be here, Andrea will be here, Adriana will, everyone else will be here, except for Enzo, who's on holiday. Um, World War II liberation, of course. Thank you, Paolo, for uh, the Wikipedia pill. And uh, a holiday on a Thursday. Yes, like, this is interesting. The only country in the world, countries in the world, that do the, mon the holidays on the following Monday are, are U.S. and U.K. Everyone else, everywhere else in the world, we, may, we do the holiday on the actual holiday day, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yes, Thursday, there's a holiday. And then there's a holiday on the 1st of May, which is Labor Day. Our way is best. Ian McNeil is saying their way is best. And uh, who am I to say that he is wrong? Anyway, um, guys, uh, thanks for uh, following. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Um, we love you to bits. And um, go try um, headquarters if you haven't. And give us some, uh, and again, give us feedback. Feedback, feedback. I'll see you in two weeks' time. Cheers, bye-bye.